Hey, everybody. Um, thanks for logging in. Can you guys do me a favor, um, first off, and just comment in the chat window and let me know that you can both hear me and see me? Uh, that would be very helpful. Hear and see. Yay, that's a good, that's a good start. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and start and we'll go through this. And I want to be able to try to do this as efficiently as possible to not eat up too much of your time. I know some of you are already starting to get busy. Um, uh, so uh, we'll go through this. I'll, I'll stay on here as long as you guys, if you guys have any questions or anything. Um, we are in my studio space today. So and I got this cool new webcam that will follow me around. So you can kind of see my little space here where I actually shoot out of. So if you guys have any questions about any gear or anything at the end, we can nerd out on that if you want. But we just want to talk about barcode scanning today. So we are going to talk about using the barcode scanner specifically to um, just match our names to our subject. So this is basically to try to get you guys away from um, now, I say getting away from writing down image numbers, um, but a lot of people still maintain writing down image numbers uh, just for safety's sake. In case something happens to the scanner, uh, you know, you run over with your car leaving the, the, the shoot site or something, uh, you would have those image numbers. Um, but even if you write them down on site and scan uh, the barcodes, you would then uh, not have to key those in. So you would have them in case there was an emergency, um, but really it's just about not, not having to type all of that information in. Um, we're not going to get into the prepay site. If you are a prepay photographer, uh, we're not going to get into that today, but the, the marriage between prepay and uh, barcode scanning is really great because essentially the, the parents are keying in their own data and then that with their receipt that you can print out actually has the barcode on it and you can scan that. Um, and essentially you have to do zero data entry because the orders and then the scan. But again, we're going to try to keep this very base level today. Um, very simplified. I didn't even set up a highlight and any, or any of that stuff because we're not talking about lighting. We're not talking about anything except the workflow of how to um, barcode scan, all right? So we're gonna do two different jobs today. That's why I have two, to, two cameras set up uh, here and I've got two barcode scanners because we're gonna kind of walk through the workflow of two types of jobs. Um, one of those types of jobs is using generic, generic roster, meaning that you don't get anything from the league except for maybe how many teams there are uh, in the league. You don't have names. You don't have any of that information. You're going to get that at the shoot, okay? So, again, we're going to do one that's no names, and then we're going to do one that would have a real roster, real names, and just kind of look at the way that those two things work. Um, with our generic roster, we're also going to pretend that that job is not prepay, that we're going to do those on a post-sale gallery like Got Photo or Photo Day or something like that. So we're going to look at um, sort of the differences between uh, generic roster and real roster and the difference between um, prepay and uh, post-sale gallery sales. Okay. And I'm going to keep the questions thing over on my other monitor so that I can kind of keep referencing back to see if you guys have questions. But if you have questions while we're going through, just type them in the uh, box and I'll, I'll, I'll try to make sure I'm, I'm looking over there and catching that as we go, okay? So the, the one thing that's different, if you're not doing barcode scanning now um, compared to if you're doing uh, traditional uh, or just writing down the man manual, I'm sorry, 
you're just writing down image numbers and keying those into the spreadsheet. If you're doing manual, there's really nothing to set up ahead of time before you go shoot your job. You can just leave, go shoot, you'll capture all of your order forms and data and images at the shoot, and you'll come back to the office and just start keying that into the system. But obviously, with barcode scanning, uh, we have to sort of pre-set up our job so that the system can create our barcode to give us something to scan. Now, I'm gonna sit down and share my screen and we'll go through setting up these two jobs, but I went ahead and pre-set up the job so that I'm not having to run to a printer uh, upstairs to the printer and get, get my uh, barcodes. So I went ahead and pre-printed everything, but we will set our jobs up and then we'll just transition to the jobs I already had uh, set up so that we can then follow through the process, okay? So um, we'll go ahead, I'm gonna share my screen and then we will dig in to uh, setting up the job. So give me one second. Okay, so, okay, I'll leave this going. I didn't realize I could have uh, both the uh, camera and the uh, screen share going on at the same time. Okay, so now hopefully you guys can see my screen, correct? You see this? Someone type and let me know you see my screen. See it, cool. Thanks, Andy and Jeff. Um, okay, so I'll shrink this down over here. And so now you guys see this, right? You guys see my next gen page. So, all right, here are the two that I set up. Um, and let me zoom this in. So these are the two that I pre-set up and we're gonna set up um, two jobs just exactly like them so you can kind of see what this is going to look like all right so let's go ahead and set up our our generic job first so we'll just say new active job we'll use our testing league we'll call this um barcode generic and then i'm trying to remind myself which because i've got two scanners so someone remind me that the uh the generic scanner is the silver scanner. I've got one that's black and one that's silver. All right, so our barcode job, we're gonna do generic and it is the silver, uh, my silver scanner that's down here. So we've got our silver scanner and then the other one's black. So I'll go ahead and say save and next. My job is created. I'll say next. This is our generic job, so we don't need to import a roster on this one, we're gonna use the roster wizard. And many of you, if you have not barcode scanned before, probably haven't even used the roster wizard because like I said before, generally when you're importing the stuff in, you've already shot the job, you've already created that data, and you would just have been keying that data in and then importing that into the system, okay? But now we're going to import, or we're gonna use the roster wizard, and the first thing it wants to know is how many teams you've got in your job. And we'll go ahead and say three, because that's how I set up the other job. And then default number of players for each team, depending on what kind of labels you're printing out. Um, for instance, the sticky labels that a lot of people use, especially, oops, lost that. Um, especially if you are doing, sorry, let me just, Status, recognize me again. Okay. Um, if you're doing order forms, you can use these sticky labels, peel these off. This is just on paper, but you can print these on address labels, peel these off and stick them onto your order form. But they are 30 up on a page. And so oftentimes, if I'm just doing a generic roster, I'll just put 30 players on a team because that way a whole team just ends up being a sheet of labels. Um, so I just always set up the job in, um, in numbers of 30. So you'd be 30, 60, 90. Sorry, my camera keeps losing me. Okay, so on this, I'm gonna do three teams 
with 30 players. And again, that'll just fill out a sheet of uh, um, labels. So I'll do team red, team white, and team blue. So very patriotic league. All right, so now I'll say save. And once that's saved, oh, oh yeah, so um, I would recommend printing on a laser printer. Uh, the scanner, especially if you're doing the small sticky labels, um, uh, inkjet printers have a little bit of bleed to the ink. And because those little lines are so fine on those little labels, you, you definitely want something that prints really nice and sharp. So a laser printer just has sharper edges than an inkjet printer is going to have. Okay, so you can see it went ahead, it created my generic roster. I've got Team Red, Team White, and Team Blue. And you can see all my generic players, player one, players 1 through 30 on each team. Okay, so that's it. I'll just say next. Not going to worry about logos right now. I'll just go skip that. And now on the barcode step, when I stay in barcode mode, the next thing it's going to let me do is download those barcode sheets. Um, so I want to download my photo day kit. I want to download my photo day roster, and I will, we'll, I'll show you what that, how that functions after we shoot our images. Um, so I'll just check the box there. And for now, I'm just going to say I want barcode labels. Again, those are the sticky labels. Uh, but we'll also download uh, the camera card just so you can see the difference. So I'll check the box for the barcode labels, and I'll say download. Now these will download onto my computer. And then once these download, I will open this up. So basically now we have a folder that inside of it has my barcode labels, my uh, photo day roster, and I'll show you that in a second, and then my shoot day kit, and I'll show you in there what we really need. So my barcode labels just look like this. That's it. Uh, team blue, team red, team white, 30 players, one through 30, you can see the player number here, and that's it. So we've got player one through 30 for three teams. So we're good there. Um, our uh, photo day kit, um, this is going to have more information on it. We're building out a uh, job aid, and this kind of comes up in the manual process even. Um, but we're going to build this out to where it's got a little more descriptors of so if you've got staff, it can help them, um, you know, it can help them when they're prepping for a shoot. But what we're really interested in is page six and page seven. And those are really the only ones you have to print out um, are these two pages. So just print these two, and I already have them printed in my stack over there. So then the photo day kit, this is where we can use this after the shoot. So this is effectively exactly like your roster that you might fill out if you were shooting manually. Um, the only difference being that it has this extra column uh, in the front that has the barcode number, okay? So this barcode number becomes the anchor to the database. So if you took an order form from a kid and you took barcode number five, and stuck it onto their order form, scanned it and took their picture, they're now linked to that barcode number. So on the roster, basically when we get done shooting, we have our stack of order forms. We just come in here and start changing the names and jersey numbers to the real information. So now it'll still link to that barcode, but now instead of being generic names, it's real names, okay? So all we're doing is using this roster after we've shot our job, similar to if we did manual, to, to change uh, the player's names, okay? So that's it. So from this job information that I've got, I want to print out my barcodes, 
I want to print out my time sync barcode and my time sync target and my buddy barcode that's right here. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I want to print out the, that series, all the labels and my time sync uh, information. And we can just leave the photo day roster on the computer for now until we come back from our shoot and we can use this to finish up the job. Okay, so at this point, we've downloaded our stuff and we're ready to go shoot. There's nothing else we need. We just needed the time sync information, the barcodes for our job, and that's it. We can go uh, get this thing done. So let me real quick download these camera cards. So just so you can see. Um, and I'll, the, the reason why some people like the camera card better, it takes more paper. Uh, because they're only six up on a page instead of 30 up on a page. Um, but if you are considering shooting and at just, you, let's say the kids aren't going to have order forms. So you're not going to have an order form to stick a label to. Um, for whatever reason, if you're doing post sales and you're trying to use a generic roster, or you're just not trying to deal with order forms or whatever, uh, whatever the scenario is, this just gives room on these papers to write names and stuff on. So if you wanted to, you know, the first kid walks up and you say, what's your name? He tells you their name and they, you write it down, write down their jersey number, scan this barcode, take their picture. You could even write the image numbers on here if you wanted to. So. I just wanted to show you this. This just gives more room, some more flexibility to be able to write down information as you go through your shoot. Okay. So if you're not using the sticky labels, you may uh, think about using these. And then there's even another one, these um, two by two labels. I'll go ahead and download one of these as well. Uh, the two by two labels, I can't remember if they're eight up on a page. Yeah, so they're actually 16 up on a page. So again, you've got the player's name and the team. You could still have room to write down information below each one of the barcodes if you wanted to handle it that way. Okay, so there are some options, some different formats for the, um, for the barcodes. Okay, so that job's ready to go. So let's go ahead and set up our job that would have a real roster okay so we'll go ahead and say new job same testing league and we'll call this barcode with roster okay so now i'll say next and i'll say i want to import a csv file obviously the first thing you're going to want to do is download the csv file i'm assuming all of you probably that are on here are already using the data import uh, to shoot your jobs manually. So it's gonna look exactly the same. And I went ahead and pre-set up a roster for us. Um, here. So I just set it up like this. So one of the things that I do recommend that you do is, I, so I set this up with the same teams but there's only seven players on each team. So I just did four real names. And then I created three generic players per team. So this is really nice if you, if you potentially get to a shoot and they say, oh, well, we added two players to one of these teams. Well, you wanna be prepared to have some extra barcodes that you can scan for those players that they added. So adding a couple generic players to each roster, each team on your roster just allows for some of that flexibility in case they, maybe they said over the phone that they didn't want coaches in the, in the team pictures. And then you show up and they're like, oh, we changed our mind. We want the coaches in the team pictures. Well, you would need barcodes for them. So I recommend um, just adding however many of these you feel like you might need. Okay, so I just did three just to show you, but you could do five, you could do 10. It just, it's just up to you um, how you want to handle this. Obviously, you know, you're always going to probably have more players than four on a team. 
So you could always just backfill your team to 30 players if you wanted to. Um, that's up to you. But I do recommend adding a couple generic players just in case um, they add players to a team, they throw coaches at you, you know how it is, something always comes up. So it's better to be prepared uh, and, you know, print a couple extra barcodes, okay? But this is basically our roster. Again, we don't have image numbers. We don't have any orders because we haven't done anything yet. We're just setting up the job so that we can download uh, those barcodes. So the same deal, I would just find my roster, um, import that in. It's going to set it up just like normal. You know, I've got my barcode numbers here. This is my roster. You can see my real um, names, and I spelled some of these names wrong already. Look at that, Fred Flintstone's names. Um, so now you've got all of these uh, players. We've got our generic players. Again, same thing. I'm just going to say next. I'm going to say no logos again. And I can always come back and add logos because, again, I'm just trying to get these barcodes so I can go shoot my job. I'm going to go ahead and say I want barcodes again. Definitely labels probably here because I, I already know the kids' names for the most part, so I don't really need to write anything down. But I still want this photo day roster um, just in case. So I'm going to download both of those. And once those download, again, it's the same thing. I get this little job folder, and I've got my labels. I've got my, my photo day roster that now has the added barcode number column. And then I have my uh, shoot day kit that will have my time sync uh, information on it. Okay? So now, again, with that, I print those out. I'm ready to go shoot my job. All right? All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go shoot our job. I'm actually going to come in here and take these two jobs and just delete those because that was just to show you the setup. We're going to use these other ones that I pre-set um, up uh, to, to do our real jobs. So I'll delete those two jobs. And I'm going to stop screen sharing for one sec so that hopefully my camera goes large. And now I'm going to go, we're going to go shoot our job. So come with me. I feel like I'm in like, um, Sesame Street. Okay. So I've got my two scanners. So you can see, I'm going to try this new, this new camera. You're supposed to be able to do hand gestures and it'll zoom. Look at that. How cool is that? Okay. So the little scanner has two buttons. Uh, I'm going to try to turn it into the light. So you can see it's got like a big button up here, and then there's a little baby button uh, down at the bottom. So what you want to do before you shoot a job is hold that button down, and it'll, it'll blink for a second, and then it'll eventually beep and turn green. That means it erased any old data it had stored on the scanner. Okay, so I'll take my other scanner, and I'll do the same thing. So it will it will blink and blink and blink until it beeps, and now we're ready to go. Okay, so now I have two scanners, and I can shoot my job. So I'm going to start with. Okay, let me <laughs> remember now. I told you I was going to forget. Uh, so the generic is the silver one. So we will. Use the Z9 for the gen. Let's go Z9 with the generic. Okay, so our generic job first. So let's walk through some parameters here. So I've got my barcode labels. Let me zoom this back out. Very cool. All right, so I've got my barcode labels. Um, and this is where, if you, if you were happen to be at the Next Gen Workshop this summer, Sean Bass did a little presentation on just getting organized for your shoot and and definitely when you're barcode scanning you want to be pretty organized just because you want to have your barcodes where they need to be you need to have everything 
sort of, um, you know, he, he takes each sheet um, and takes little manila folders, and he'll take the barcode for each team, the barcodes for each team, along with a storyboard, and he'll put those in a folder. And then any order forms he takes, any information he has, he'll keep in that folder for that team. So each team has a little manila folder and has the barcodes in it, has the storyboard in it, has any order forms or any other data for that team in it. And when you're done with that team, you can just set that to the side, grab another team, and you're ready to shoot. Okay? So one of the first things that has to happen with every barcode job is to time sync. And this is by far, if this does not happen, the barcode process won't work, okay? The way that this works is there is a clock in the barcode scanner. There is a clock in your camera, all right? So while you're shooting, a clock is running in both one of these devices, okay? So essentially what we want to do is make sure that the timeline on the camera and the scanner is is, is aligned. So we need to tell the computer, the, the next gen system, if in, in what degree the clocks are off in the camera compared to the scanner or the, can, the scanner compared to the camera, okay? So the only way to do that is to have an event happen at the same exact moment, okay? By doing something in the camera and the scanner and telling the computer that I am saying that this, in, this, this thing we did, a scan and took a picture, happened at the same exact moment. So whatever the clocks say in the two devices, justify that and make them run on the same timeline. And so when they're running on the same timeline, then you have a barcode scan, you have images, However, image, how many, however many images you need to take. And then the next barcode will close that frame of time and those images will get assigned to that previous barcode. So then you scan, you shoot, you scan, and these images get assigned and then on and on. Scan, shoot, scan, shoot. And they just kind of get, they get assigned back to the barcode you just scanned, okay? But it can't happen if these aren't time synced, because if they're not running along a timeline, there's no way to know where those frames of time happened and what images were captured in between each barcode, because they would be all off justification, okay? But it's super easy to do. So one of the things I always would do, especially if I was working by myself, is I would just take the the camera sync. So this sheet right here with the little target on it, that's your, your camera time sync target. So I would just clamp or tape this to a stand while I was setting up my station. And then back at the camera, so I want to make sure first off that the uh, camera card is empty. So I'm gonna go ahead I'll just pretend that I have done all my light testing and all my lights are set and everything's good. Delete everything off the card. So now I have a, a blank barcode scanner and a blank memory card. So the first scan on my barcode scanner is gonna be this time sync sheet, this time sync barcode. And the first image in my camera is going to be the picture of this target. Okay? So all I do is I just get set up and I'm going to get my camera in manual focus so I don't have to worry about that. And then I just want to scan and shoot. That's it. So I'm time synced. I took a picture and a scan. And you could see they weren't like scientifically the same exact moment, but they were a fraction of a second scan shoot or shoot scan. You know, they're just very close together, okay? So now my time sync is done, and now, again, it's, you know, whatever time now 
the, the clocks are just running. So it doesn't matter how long it takes. If it's 30 minutes before somebody shows up, it doesn't matter. Um, real quick, the, the, the time sync, uh, the time sync, uh, barcode. Hold on, let me get myself back on here. The time sync barcode is, is just not specific to the job. So you, you can print out a bunch of these. I always tell people to like, Put one of these in your cash box. Put one of these in your camera bag. Put one of them in your light case. That way you always have uh, a time sink. I've had people take them, cut this out, and actually like tape it to their tripod leg so that they can all, it's always just right there. Um, so again, this is not job specific. It's just a generic time sink. It's always going to be exactly the same. Okay. So just print a few of these out and have them. So you can never get to a shoot and not have your um, your time sync, okay? All right, so now I'm all set up. Let me go grab, I wanna grab this target because this actually has my buddy barcode on it as well. Um, and I might need that if I have to shoot a buddy in it, okay? All right, so now let's pretend kids start showing up and I need to start shooting. So for this job, I've got three teams and I've just got generic names. So in this instance, it doesn't matter who gets what number. You just don't want to use one twice. So um, that's where the sticky labels are nice. Or if you're going to be writing down, uh, if you're going to be writing down names, then you can see that you've already scanned. If you're just going to be scanning off a piece of paper like this, um, just cross them out so you know that you've used each one as you use it. Um, again, normally, in, in, in our world, when we did prepay and we had order forms, we would peel this off, we would take the order form, we would stick that label to their order form, and then we would scan that and shoot their picture. So that, would, that was our process. We always, we were a prepay studio um, and we had order forms. Now, even if you're doing online prepay, then at least each kid would have a sheet with their information on it and a little barcode at the top. So you couldn't accidentally scan something twice. But just be careful if you're just going to scan, if you're going to do what I'm about to do, just be careful you don't use the same barcode twice. Okay? So now we've time synced our image, and all we have to do is as the kids come in, all we really need to know is what team they're on. Um, we would say, what team are you on? And they would say team red and you would find team red barcode. You would, if they had an order form and these were sticky labels, you would take player one, peel it off, put it on their order form and then just scan it. That's it. So now I've scanned one. So I'm scanning off a piece of paper. So I want to make sure I put a line through that so I know I've already used it because I don't want to use it again and mess myself up. Okay, so player one has been scanned. I get them into their team pose. Uh, when we barcode scan, it's always team first and then individuals after that. So we we'll go team, individual, and then if you're doing a buddy image, that's where the buddy barcode would come into play. We would have a buddy, we would scan this buddy barcode and get two players or three players, however many is in our buddy image, and then take our buddy picture, okay? So right now, I've scanned player one. I've got them posed for their team picture. I'll take that picture. All right, got that one. So then I go ahead. Let's, on this one, on this generic job, let's go ahead and do multiple poses as well because I want to show you how those line up. So, all right, first individual pose. That looks great. Yeah, you can palm the ball and spin it on your finger or whatever. Cool. All right, there's one. We'll do three poses of each person. All right, what's the other pose you want to do? Okay, great. Looks awesome. All right, um, yeah, what's the other pose you want to do? Okay, yeah, you want to throw the ball up in the air. Great. Okay, three poses. There are three poses. We did team, pose one pose two, pose three, okay, cool. 
So we'll save our buddy barcode for our prepay job because that's probably more realistic that you have buddy images in prepay jobs. Post sales, the buddy images I don't think are as popular because it's just like you don't want to be doing stuff you don't know if you're going to um, get paid for. All right, next kid comes up. Cool, same team. All right, Team Red again. So I'll go ahead. If I was doing order forms, I'd take his order form, peel the label, stick it to his order form and scan it. Or I would ask him, what's your name? Okay, Jimmy Smith. And I would write it down on here. And then I would scan that player two barcode. But I'm just going to scan right off of here. Right there. Okay, get them posed for their team picture. I give them the pose for the team picture. Team picture taken. Uh, what first individual pose do you want to do? Okay, great. Looks great. All right, right here. Click. Okay, there's our first pose. All right, give me another pose. Two. All right, give me another pose. All right, great. Looks amazing. So three poses, team uh, and three individual poses. All right, I'm just going to rattle through some of these. Um, so now let's say next kid walks up. He's like, oh, I'm on team blue. Okay, no problem. We can shoot out a sequence. We don't have to shoot all the teams at once. We can shoot them as they come. That's the beautiful thing about barcode scanning is if you're just set up and the kids are told to just come to you and get their picture taken before they go to practice, no problem. I'll, I'll shoot them however they show up to me. All right. So team blue. Okay, cool. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and scan that. And again, if I was doing labels, I'd stick it to his order form. If I was just writing down, I would write down here. I'm not, I'm just going to cross it off. All right. Here's your pose you're going to do, blah, blah, blah. Team pictures taken. All right. Let's do an individual pose. One individual pose, two individual poses, and three individual poses. You can see I'm just trying to give a little space between each image um, as I'm playing around and testing here because it's not realistic. You would go scan, boom, 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 boom. You know, it's, you, you, there would be a little bit of space as they pose. So I'm trying to uh, make it easier on the computer to uh, figure that out. So we'll just do one more off of the last team. So a kid comes up, he's from team white. Say, okay, I'm gonna give him player one. Cross that off, write the name down, stick the label, put it on his order form, whatever you're doing, you're just going through your uh, stuff. So uh, hold on, there's a question. Uh, Jeff says, if I take more than one capture for each pose, yeah, so, I, you know, because we're talking about, but in between the scans is a block of time. It doesn't matter if you took 5 million pictures in that block of time, as long as you culled it down to one team and however many individual pictures you wanted, you'd be perfectly fine. Okay. It doesn't matter if you shoot 5 million and cull it down to four, it's perfectly fine with me. Okay, you, it, the system doesn't care. And I'll actually show you one more, um, uh, one more way that uh, there might be, you, you could run into a problem and how to get by it. So I think I took my team picture. This is like real life because I can't remember if I took my team picture or not. Um, I'll pretend I did and we'll find out later. So now uh, individual pose. Uh, individual pose two uh, and individual pose three. Okay. So um, what happens if, okay, so let's say, let's say for instance, because I don't want to work through too many of these what if scenarios uh, because you know as well as I do when you're in a volume setting, a million what ifs could come up. Um, so I don't want to eat up a bunch of our time trying to go down the rabbit hole of trying to come up with every scenario that may throw a hiccup in the process. But this one actually does come up quite a bit. Actually, let's save it for our prepay job. I'll come back to that. So let's just do one more uh, from Team White. So we'll do two. So go ahead. 
team pose, all right, looks great. There's our team pose, all right. Individual pose one, got it. Uh, what, uh, yes, okay, yeah, perfect. Looks great, you look amazing. And then one more pose, what do you got? Okay, something cool, boom, okay. So there, that's our job. Our job is done. We photographed everybody. We scanned everything. Um, so now this camera and, and camera card are done and this scanner is done. So this was our generic job. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that over there. We'll just get this camera out of the way. And now we will shoot with our other job. So now our other job is a real roster. So we have real names, real people, and it's just, just a little different um, that how you have to handle that. But the first thing we need to do is time sync our camera to our scanner. So we put our target there. We get our time sync uh, image here. We go ahead and we format our memory card. We hold down the little button. We're good, we're empty uh, on here, we're empty on here. So we'll go ahead and time sync. Time sync done. Okay, we're time synced, we're ready to rock and roll. I've got my, my barcodes that have real names, okay? So now, instead of just taking the next barcode on the list, not only do I need to make sure I get the right team, but I've got to get the right player. So when somebody walks up, I say, what team are you on? Team Red, okay, perfect. And like that's why it's good to have a whole sheet per team and have things organized because right now I've got Team Blue team red and team white all on one sheet. And it's just a little more complicated to try to find stuff. So it's really nice to try to work out uh, to where you had page breaks. Um, Andy asks earlier, I had a question about the scanner. Does it make a difference what model of Opticon scanner you use? I'm buying another model. Um, just, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think you're gonna be able to get the, the data in the same format. It's all about the formatting. Um, I have only used the, this is an OPN 2004. It's the all black one. And then the OPN 2001 has the silver side. Um, these are the only two I've used. So I can't speak to um, what else would work, but I'm certain there are probably infinite numbers of barcode scanners that can do what we're doing here. I just can't speak to it because I have no idea. Um, I recommend the 2001 or the 2004. And I know there's a bar, a Bluetooth version as well, but I've never, I think it's exactly the same thing. It's just instead of having to use a U, little USB cable to plug it into your computer, it will um, Bluetooth sync, but I've never tried it. So I can't speak to it. Okay. So now we've time synced. Kids are starting to show up to our shoot. Kid walks up. What team are you on? Okay, you're on team blue. What's your name? Okay, Fred Flintstone. All right, cool. So I just look on my barcode, find Fred Flintstone, scan Fred Flintstone, and now I am taking pictures. So they would do whatever team pose they're gonna do. And we're going to pretend this job is more of a prepay job. Um, so we're going to just do one individual pose. Okay, so we're not doing gallery, so we're not going to give pose options. We're doing standard prepay, one team image, one individual image, and if they have a buddy order, a buddy image. Okay, so what uh, individual pose would you like to do? Okay, that's a great choice. All right, uh, look right here, click. Okay, team individual done. Next kid comes up. And again, this is an instance where you're probably gonna have order forms. So these sticky labels, you, you can peel them and stick them because it just, it's just easier because now the barcode's on their order form, but it really doesn't matter. Um, so 
Next kid walks up and he says, I'm team red. And uh, what's your name? Freddie Mercury. Okay, cool. Got you right here. Let me scan you. All right, Freddie, go ahead and go up there. And I give him a team pose. And then what, what individual pose would you like to do off the pick a pose board? Okay, great. That looks great. All right. Look right here into the camera and perfect. Okay. Team and individual done. All right. Next kid walks up and oh, uh, team white. What's your name? George Jetson. Okay. Got you right here. Let me. Okay. So here's a scenario, which I will, uh, this is, this is good to know. So I take George's team picture and Let's say we're, we're shooting t-ballers, they're little, they sometimes freak out and cry. George is scared, he starts crying. I, I'm not gonna be able to get his individual picture until he calms down. Let's let mom take George over to the side, see if she can calm him down. We'll get his individual picture in a minute after he chills out, okay? So we're good, next person comes up, okay. Uh, Johnny Smith on Team Red. Okay, great. Got you right here. I'll scan that, and I'll go Team. Uh, what individual pose do you want to do? Okay, perfect. That looks great. Oh, you have a buddy. Oh, okay. Is your buddy here? All right, grab your brother. So now he's getting his brother. I'm getting my barcode. It would not obviously still be there. I've got my buddy barcode. I get him and his brother in the picture i scan my buddy barcode and now i can take their buddy picture oh it looks great oh wait go back to back okay yeah cool all right look right here boom done okay buddy image done okay so that one was team individual scanned the buddy that image will go into the buddy slot all right oh okay george is done crying now so we can get george's individual picture but we've already shot somebody else. So basically all we need to do, go back to George's barcode, reactivate George's, let me find George Jetson here. Okay, um, so basically reactivate George's sequence and essentially what the system's gonna do it's going to put the next image in the next available slot. It's going to skip the team pose because I already did that. And it'll, okay, wipe his eyes a little more. His face is a little red still, but it's fine. Uh, we'll order retouching from next gen and um, get rid of your splotchy face. All right, big smile. Okay, you're not going to smile. Fine. All right, we got individual picture now. So if anybody ever has to leave or, or walks off, I'll show you another scenario that comes up. So, okay, uh, what are you, uh, you're on team white, what's your name, Johnny Cash? Okay, cool, let me get you here. All right, got Johnny Cash scanned. All right, team picture, individual picture. Okay, and then he runs off. Okay, and then I go, next kid comes up oh team uh steve jones i hope i did not i'm not going to do that because i don't know oh michael buble all right that that's a very unique name okay scan team and then individual and then somebody goes hey johnny cash was supposed to have a buddy image and he ran off and now he's back with his sister okay no problem. All I have to do, rescan the main barcode to reactivate Johnny Cash's sequence, then scan a buddy barcode, and now I can shoot their buddy picture. That's it. Okay? So let's do one more scenario where basically we will go, what's your name? Jack Daniels? You're on team blue, okay, cool. Scan the barcode, team and individual. And now I totally forget to scan the next barcode. Mom's asking me questions about how many buttons she gets and is there a discount for multiple kids and 
if, if they can do a pose where somebody's on somebody's shoulders and they're riding a horse and I'm all flustered and I don't know what's going on. The next kid walks up. I don't scan a barcode and I just say team and individual. Okay. Now that kid never got scanned. I, I, this, this is where potentially writing down image numbers can save you uh, on the back end. Okay. So that job's done. Uh, we're going to set this one aside for a minute and we will actually no, I'll dump all this stuff all at once. So this is where I can really recommend, um, like you see how on this older scanner, we had a two on here. Like it, it would really do you a service to put a little number on your scanner, maybe put a little number on the back of your memory card and maybe even assign a camera as two. So like if this was camera two, then it would always get scanner two, and it would always get uh, it would always get uh, camera two and, and card two and all that stuff. Okay, now I have completely mixed up the uh, while I'm telling you to write down the two. So this is post sales and. The roster was black, so that was the one I was using just now. This one goes here. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the webcam and go back to screen share because we are done. Do you guys have any more questions or scenarios that you need to play out in your mind of what this would look like at a shoot? Um, but, it, you know, it's very simple. As long as you time sync, it's really just scanning and shooting and scanning and shooting and scanning and shooting. Um, there are issues that can come up, like I showed, where you either miss the barcode or somebody runs off and you've got to rescan their barcode. All of that stuff can be dealt with. The main thing is the time sync. You have to time sync. If you don't time sync, there's no saving anything at that point because there's no way to ever fake a time thing, okay? Because there's no way to go back in time. Um, you've seen all the Marvel movies about the, the, the multiverse. There's no multiverse we can get into where we can try to justify those clocks after the fact. Uh, if it's not time synced, you know, that's where I hope you wrote down image numbers because it's, the barcode scanning is just never going to work, okay? I can't stress that enough. Just take the time, make sure you time sync, and then, and then you know, again, anything else that comes up at the shoot, missing a barcode, uh, somebody running off and you have to come back, all that stuff can be dealt with after the fact, and we'll see that in a second. But not time syncing, there's nothing you can do. You just kind of, you've got to, work through it manually at that point. Okay. All right. Let me get to the computer. Is there an in shoot? No, it just, it just ends. So there's no, like the shoot is over. Um, if you ever need to like, say you have two shoots in one day and we're shooting here and we've got to pack up and go straight to another shoot. There's no way to download the data, back it up, clear out the memory card. You can just basically get to the next shoot, re-time sync, and then I'll show you with the text file that comes out of the scanner, you can just, from time sync to time sync, you can create a new text file, and now you have two separate job uh, barcode scan files. So you can, it's easy to do. Um, so you can absolutely shoot one day, go to another you know, shoot, shoot, and then separate that data uh, before you upload it. Um, the other thing is if you have multiple stations, you would have a, each station would have a, a scanner and a camera. And that's where I was saying numbering them so that camera two always gets scanner two, 
uh, camera one always gets scanner one, on and on and on. Okay. Okay. Let me. Uh, I'm going to shut down the webcam and because uh, I need that plug in my computer, and we will get these images in. All right, you guys can see my screen again, right? Okay, cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dump these images real quick. I thankfully shot really, really teeny tiny JPEGs, so it shouldn't take very long. So silver was generic. So I'm just going to take my camera, my images from my camera. Dump those in here so I have them. And then let me just do the next card. Okay, so now all I have to do is there's a little uh, USB plug on my barcode scanner, and I just need to plug in my scanner, and I will show you what the software looks like. There's a little piece of software that comes from Opticon that allows you to pull the data in different formats. So I will open up. So this is what the Opticon um, software looks like right here. Okay. So, and there's a, in, in your next gen, everybody that, that signed up got a Dropbox folder and in that Dropbox folder, if you if you need this again, just reach out to me, I'll resend you the link. Um, but there is barcode scanner data and there's a screenshot of this so you know what all these little settings are supposed to be. And once you set them once, you can, um, you it'll stay that way, okay? So you can see, so basically the symbology is the type of scan that it is the time of scan, the date of scan. We want a text file, comma separated. It's 12 hour, so it's basically AM, PM format, and it's USA date format, so that's it. So all I do is say get barcodes, and here are my barcodes that I scanned, okay? So you can see the time sync is first, and then all of my scans that I did. All right, so and it just plopped that down. Where did it put it? I just put that. And again, this is just show you you can you can re grab this data over and over and over again. Do you see barcode data? Actually, I'll just put it right into my folder. This is the silver one. So I just say get barcodes again, it'll beep again. And now here is my text file, and literally that's all it is. It's a text file with the time sync and then scans on it. That's it. So that's why I'm saying if you had a time sync and then a bunch of scans, and then there was another time sync and another bunch of scans, you can just grab those, copy, make a new text file, paste them, and create two separate sheets. Okay, so we've got that one. 
So I'll unplug this scanner, plug in the other scanner so we can get that data. This little rubber flap on this thing. I have no fingernails. Hold on. Let's see. <clears throat> All right, so I plug this guy in. So same deal. I'm just going to drop this one into here and I just say get barcodes. Um, I do recommend if you uh, the first time you get your barcode, take it out of the box, go ahead and plug it in, launch this application and then say um, set time. And it'll basically just whatever the time and date is on your computer, it'll set that time on the scanner. So if I say set time, it'll say, do you want to set the device to this time? And you'll say, okay. And now the clock is up to date. I've seen these things out of the box, say they're like, it's like 1965 or something crazy. All right. So let's go back to the next gen site. We'll do the generic one first okay so we've got our photo day kit we've downloaded all of that so now we want we're on the upload uh data and images okay so this was our generic roster or our yeah our generic roster okay so this is where the uh photo day kit or the photo day roster comes into play. Okay, so I take this roster, open this into Excel, and now I'm back at the office and I've got whatever I did. If I wrote down their name, if I had order forms, whatever that looks like, um, now I can put real names in here. Okay, so now that player, when I import this in, will have a real name. So I just go through everybody that I photographed with a generic name, looking at how I assigned barcodes to players, whether it's a sticky label on their order form, or I wrote down their name on those camera cards. I'm just updating the generic name with real name. Okay, just go through that. I would save that. And now, just before I upload my images, I can upload this uh, file. So I re-upload my photo day roster. And now I now those two names that I just typed will be real names. Okay. So I'll say my shoot day was today, and I have one camera. So this is this is important. When you're barcode scanning, if you have multiple camera stations. You would want to say two cameras or three cameras or four cameras, and it will make you four folders that you would keep your JPEGs for that camera isolated with your text file from that scanner. So camera two's JPEGs and camera two scanner data go into camera two, camera one, camera three, and camera four. So everything is nice and isolated so that the system knows which text file goes with which JPEG file. Okay, so I'll say create my folders. So there, I'm I'm good there. Let me get logged in here so I can dump those before I get mixed up. Hard doing two jobs at one time with this. <laughs> so 
okay. So I should have 15525 right here. And all I'm going to do is I am going to take the barcode text file, drop that in, and then I will take all the JPEGs that I shot and drop those in. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let that upload, and then we will do the same thing. Let's go back to our real roster job. And the same thing here, I have my, um, I have my photo day kit. And so this we're pretending is a prepay job. So now I actually really do have names and I might have actual orders to put in. So now I sit down at the office and I've got a stack of order forms in my hand and I basically want to look at the name. I can check and make sure, like remember I had this one spelled wrong. Um, I already fixed it in the system, but I'll go ahead and fix it here. So I had that spelled wrong. I can check the name on the order form. I can put in products that they might have ordered. So I'm, I'm putting in orders now as I go. And oh yeah, they added a player or whatever. I can update real names and then put in products and packages. Okay, so this is where I can complete all my data, but I don't have to worry about image numbers at all. So I don't need any of that in my job. Okay, so now I would just save this. And then again here, I would just re-upload this to update my database with my new real information. So now I've got some products ordered. Import that, good to go. Today, one camera, create my folders. Come back to the FTP server. Go to this job now, which is 15526. Oh, wait, we got to have to refresh. Oh, there it is. Okay, 15526, camera one. Take my barcode data and my images. Throw them in there all together. All right, cool. So everything's uploaded now. So let's go back to our generic job. Gives you a little breakdown of remembering how to upload. I'll say file check. It's gonna look into the job, make sure there's a text file, make sure there are images in there. We're good to go. We don't even need to mess with this because this job, uh, we didn't have any orders. This is a post-sale job, so we're not going to have any orders. We'll go ahead and say skip. So now we're on our processing page, okay? So this is the one I couldn't remember if I took the team picture, and I obviously did not take the team picture. Um, so we can see exactly how everything lined up. If you remember, we had a team image, and then we did three individual poses okay so the new system with these alt poses and, and gallery sales um, just remember that individual images are always tied to products so this is more of a prepay column okay the alt poses are for uh post sale gallery sale and that's what we want to do this job as so we added a feature here we actually don't want any individual images because we're not going to have orders. So we're not going to have orders that are going to drive the graphics creation. So up here at the top, we added a feature. So we'll go standard team build. And then we want to say we have no individual images. We don't want individual images in that column. So if we click that, it gives us two options. One, if we just shot them as placeholders, 
we could just kick them out and they would just move down uh, to the bottom to unassigned down here. But we don't, we, we know, we just want to shift them over into the alt pose area. So we want to have alt one, alt two, and alt three instead of individual one and two. So if we say move individual images, it empties out the individual column and shifts everything over into just alt poses. Okay, so now we've got this nice collection of images here. All right, so this one got wonky because I didn't take a team picture, but it should be the same, but it doesn't matter. It'll process just the same. So now up here, all I need to do is for each one of my poses, tell the system what I want. And I can, each pose can be different. It, I don't have to get the same collection of graphics for each one, okay? So a couple of things that are different about the processing page when, uh, when you're in barcode mode. So when you're in manual mode, if there's people that didn't show up, they would still show up up here. They just wouldn't have any images assigned to them, which isn't a problem. But in barcode mode, it actually puts the absent players down here. So effectively, these are all of the barcodes that were created that never got used. So they never got scanned. So if you ever miss a barcode, and this is one of the good things about working with generic rosters, and you're going through and you're keying in the real names, that if you've got a bunch of generic names down here and one of these is like a real name, you know that you obviously photographed that person because you keyed their name in and then you must have just missed their barcode. You didn't scan it. And then you can fix that. And we'll, we've got one of those in the other job. So we'll, we'll look at that when we go. So at this point, we're golden. We've got all of our team images. We've got all our alt poses. We don't have any individuals. Our options are selected up here and we can process this job through. Okay. Nothing else would be different at this point. You guys all know how to process an image past this point. But at, at this point, the image is matched for us. We didn't have to key in any image numbers and we're ready to push the job. So you can see that if you're doing gallery sales and you don't have um, products and orders, um, if you use generic barcodes, you do have to key in the names. If you've got real names, there's really minimal stuff you have to do in the system. You would come in, you would upload a real roster with real names. You would download your barcodes. You'd take them to the shoot. You would ask people their name. You would scan their barcode, take their pictures, upload them to the system. They're going to automatically match to the players, and that's it. There's no data entry, no keying in any image numbers. None of that stuff has to happen. So you can really get in and out of the system really quickly, barcode scanning, using um, a real roster and post-sale gallery because you don't have orders and products to deal with, okay? So after the shoot, upload, the thing matches for you, you can be in and out of the next-gen system in 10, 15 minutes, okay? The, the, the import, the upload is going to take longer than everything else, okay? So that's it. We're good with our post-sale job, our generic job. Um, does anybody have questions about this side, about the generic, uh, the photo day roster, up, updating real names with from the generic names, um, you know, moving the images out of the individual column, any of that stuff. Okay, I will take your silence as understanding. Okay, so this job's done, boom, it's in production, we're good to go. Let's go back to our uh, roster job. So we've already uploaded our data, we've uploaded our images, 
We'll go ahead and file check. File check is good. We'll go next. Um, so this one, we did put one order in. So let's look with our import, with our uh, photo day roster import. Let's validate that that order got in here, okay? Yep, so we had one person, Fred Flintstone. His name is updated and correct now, so that's good. And he has the products that we ordered. So Fred's got an order, we're good to go. So now let's go look at, because we did a couple things in this job that were problematic and that we fixed. Um, so let's go ahead and say save and next. And now we will jump to the processing page. And now you can see uh, we're pretty clean. Our buddy images, remember how like one of them, we missed the buddy and we had to go back and scan to reactivate their sequence, scan the buddy barcode. So our buddy images did end up in the buddy column. So that's great. And then we had one missed uh, barcode, okay? So this is where either we wrote down the image numbers and we can go check and validate, okay, number image number 7210 was this person and then we can fix it. Or you can even go look at their image, image maybe look at their jersey number. You know, if you didn't write down images and you got to figure this out, um, then, you know, there's multiple ways to figure this out. Obviously, the easiest fail safe, especially as you're getting started with barcode scanning, is just to write down those image numbers just in case so that when you, if you need to clean anything up, you can do it really easily. But basically, all we need to do, once we identify who this team an individual uh, go to, we just come down here and we'll say, okay, it was Count Dracula. I was looking at a mirror. They're invisible in a mirror. I didn't see, I didn't scan their barcode. Um, so all I have to do is click this little arrow right here. And now they'll jump up into my active players here. I click an image and then I just move this to their team picture and I move this one to their individual picture. And now I'm clean, okay? And I can actually, since I'm not using these alt poses and this kind of stretches the page out, if you click hide alt poses, it'll just get rid of those little columns and bring everything to like this normal view. And now you don't have those alt poses all over. And the other thing you can do down here, remember how I said, if you're using generic barcodes and you come back and you sit down and you update all the generic names with real names, meaning that obviously they were at the shoot. And now down here in absent, you've got some generic players and some real players. The system knows that anybody with the first name player is a generic name. So that's why if you are adding generic players to your roster, use the first name player and then the last name can be you know numbers or whatever but i can actually click this button up here that says hide generic players and anybody with the first name player will just get ignored because we're not worried about those obviously if i never updated the name then i didn't use that barcode at all okay so i can hide those generic players and that way if i hide the alt poses and hide the generic players, I'm only looking at information that is, is relevant, okay? So at this point, again, I'm good to go. I've got team images, I've got individual images, I've got my buddy images where they're supposed to be. Um, I only put one order in, so obviously everybody's yellow saying that there's no orders, but you know, it's just only because I, well, I only put one in. Um, so at this point, we would be able to process this job. Uh, we would do our team option. We would do our individual option. Um, and then because I hid the alt poses, the alt pose graphics option even went away up here. Um, so this goes away. All right, so that's pretty much it. We would go to processing and you guys know how to take it from there.
Um, John asked, uh, in hockey, uh, he takes a standing and sitting pose per player for the team pose and pick later who is standing or sitting in the team pose. That's fine. You would just need to call that down before you upload to the, um, to the FTP site because if it, it, it's always going to go team picture. Let me show the alt poses again. So the reason why, let me just reload this page and let those images fall out again. So you scan a barcode, pulls up Jack Daniels. You've got a team picture, an individual picture. If you keep shooting, it's going to go alt one, alt two, alt three, alt four, alt five, and then they'll start falling into unassigned. Sixth pose, seventh image, eighth image, ninth image, okay? So that's just how the sequencing works. So if you did do multiple poses of people, standing pose, sitting pose, and then an individual, you would end up, you would scan the barcode, this would be a standing pose, this would be a seated pose, this might be an individual pose facing left, this is an individual pose facing right, and it's just going to sequence out like that. So you want to call it down to the two images you want to use so that they fall into the right uh, spots. So again, it doesn't matter if you want to take extra images. If you want to do uh, facing center left and right and kneeling of everybody, totally fine with me. I don't recommend you do that because it just takes so much time on the back end. But if you're going to do it, that's fine. Just narrow it down. The other thing is, if you are going to um, shoot raw, if you are a, a raw shooter, when you process out your images, you just want to make sure that when you process your JPEGs out, open. Obviously, I don't use Lightroom very often. Whatever. Do whatever you got to do. Okay, so if you're processing this file out, um, uh, okay, got it. Leave me alone. And I say export. Oh, it's Killing me. Um, you just want to make sure right here in metadata, it says include all metadata. So that way your new JPEG file will have the original creation date of the raw image in it. So just make sure that you say under metadata to include all metadata okay and that goes for if you're using photoshop if you're using capture one just make sure it's maintaining your original uh, file creation metadata and then you'll be fine so no problem shooting raw tweaking and processing to jpeg you just have to make sure that you maintain all of your metadata inside of your your new JPEG file. Okay. Are there any questions? Do you guys have any questions about anything, life in general? Anybody, any questions? I'll hang out until you guys log off, but if you guys are good, go ahead and log off. And if you guys have any questions, need to walk through some more scenarios or anything, always feel free to reach out to me. Um, I want you guys barcode scanning because it really does make a big difference. Uh, I can really speed things up. Um, so, Definitely play around. And you saw I was able to do this in the studio. 
just shooting blank black images and uploading them, seeing how they match up. Um, so you guys can absolutely test this on your own, create a fake job, shoot, just throw away images, upload, see how they match and kind of go through the process um, without actually doing it on a real job. So um, absolutely practice, ask me any questions you've got. If you've got any questions, um, I'm here to help you guys out. Um, I'd love to have you barcode scanning because I know it can save you a lot of time. So I'll hang out, make sure nobody has any questions. But if you guys are good, um, you guys can log out and you will get a recording of this so you can rewatch uh, the steps if you need to. Thanks everybody for logging in and hanging out with me.